crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to this Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks, where I'm going to show you why it's sometimes important to color images before you cut them. And I'll tell you about the advantages and disadvantages of doing it both ways. We are going to color and then cut out these lotus flowers from the Mini Flowers Paper Pumpkin Kit. And then we're going to color and cut out the forget-me-not flowers from the same kit. I have at the end of this video six projects that I'll show you in more detail. And just wanted to tell you where the stamp sets come from. They come from the August 2023 Paper Pumpkin Kit. The Paper Pumpkin Kit by itself is really pretty. I mean, there's already some die-cut shapes with lotus flowers and forget-me-nots, but I wanted to take the cards to the next level as you sometimes see me do on my Paper Pumpkin videos. I'm still waiting on my September kit. However, if you subscribe to my Paper Pumpkin, which, and I also hope you subscribe to my channel. By the way, I'm Kimberly Smith, Paper Chef. I do scan and cut tutorials, Paper Pumpkin tutorials, card making tutorials, and lots more on this channel. So please subscribe to my channel, but there's also a subscription if you're in the U.S. to the Paper Pumpkin. You would not be getting the Meaningful Flowers Kit if you subscribe. You would not be getting the September Kit either. At this point, you'd be getting a holiday kit. I think it's called Home for the Holidays or something like that. It's a holiday kit. It'll tell you when you subscribe what kit you'll be getting. It'll be the October Kit, and you wouldn't be billed until around October 10th, and it gets sent out after that. So it's not like you get the kit. The kits are a surprise. We, you're not going to ever get the kit that I'm already demonstrating. But I have a lot of... Paper Pumpkin subscribers. I'm just going to go ahead and stamp onto this mat here. All right, good. I'm going to do a couple of different ways. Let's stamp onto here, and we'll do one that's darker. Okay, and um, have a couple, if you have a couple of Paper Pumpkin, I mean, I have a paper, couple of Paper Pumpkin subscribers, and I like to give them inspiration. And I know many of my subscribers also met me through my Scan and Cut YouTube, you know, tutorials. So they have a Scan and Cut too. So we on this channel make the best of, because I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I just use the best tools for the job. Sometimes those are using the scan and cut. Sometimes it's using metal dies or whatever the case may be. All right, now what I'm going to do is, and by the way, I'm using Melon Mambo. I'm just stamping along here, Melon Mambo. I don't really need to make so many of these, but I'm just, I'm just kind of showing you that you can stamp and off stamp. And I also want to show you a couple. I'm doing a couple extra that we're not going to color in just to show you that, you know, maybe the troubles we might have with those and et cetera. All right, so now that we have everything we need, let's see, this is, let's, let's do one more, like so. All right, Lotus Flowers, Melon Mamba. Where do I come up with these colors? That's a question I get asked. So, you know, how do I, how do I always know what color to use? Well, with Paper Pumpkin, it's easy to know what colors to use because on the back of the kit, it tells me that Bubble Bath, Crush Curry, Garden Green, Melon Mambo, Misty Moonlight, Orchid Oasis, Pretty Peacock, and Tahitian Tide are used inside of this kit. So I'm like, okay, well, therefore, I didn't have to really think very hard. I'm going to make the Lotus Flowers with Bubble Bath and Melon Mambo, and I'm going to make the, these Forget-Me-Not Flowers using Tahitian Tide and a couple other colors. So now I want to tell you about something I often teach about on this channel, and it's my pencil trick. If I were to do nothing and just try to cut these out, There'd be too many gaps in the images. We'll leave a couple just as they are, just to kind of show you. See how there's a gap here? And, it, you know, a gap here. So you basically, I'll leave one so, to show you that it probably won't cut out. You can, you can fill in the gaps a couple ways. You can, you can use a pencil, and then later you could take an eraser and erase the pencil mark after you cut it. However, one, one reason that you might want to color ahead of time, and I'm going to go ahead and use the bubble bath blends over the top of my inked images. So I'm going to use dark bubble bath first and then light bubble bath. The reason you might want to color first is then it, you, you can avoid the, pe the pencil trick. So in other words, you can avoid, I'm going to use the, there's, by the way, when you use the alcohol blend markers, there's a brush tip and then there's a, there's a brush tip side, right? And there is a, a, a thinner side. So what I'm doing is going around the outside of these flowers with the darker side. Now that, that serves a couple purposes. Number one, it blends over the water-based ink, which I just stamped in, this is water-based. Now I'm blending over it with alcohol-based, so I'm kind of smearing that. 
And that gets rid of those. We have this special technique, and it's called distinctive stamping, and it's a little little dots in our, and I say R, meaning the Stampin' Up! company. I don't represent them. I'm, I'm a demonstrator, but I'm independent. But meaning there's this, there's this um, thing that we do, and it's called distinctive stamping. But I like to smear those little distinctive stamps with, with my, or swoosh them, you might want to call it. Now I'm using the light bubble bath just to get in there and blend the two colors together. And then it, it gets rid of like a lot of those distinctive stamping dots, which I like. Plus it fills in the gap. So this one's going to be easier to cut out with the scan and cut. Now we're going to use a little bit of crushed curry. Only because there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of crushed curry in this. And I just put a little bit of crushed curry in the middle of the lotus flower like so. Just take the crushed curry marker. I know it doesn't really look that yellow because there's, there's I wish they would have left us a bigger, an emptier spot in the middle. Something like that. I'm using crushed curry marker. You could use crushed, oh no, they don't think they make crushed curry blends. Anyway, now I'm just going to blend that in there like so. All right, so now that's good. We should have distinctive edges, and if not, we'll you know we'll try again, and we'll try to make them come out. So let's do that a couple more times. I'm going to take the thin side, and just do, if you're going to do nothing else, you're going to take just, and you might want to color them later, and I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of both methods. The very minimum you want to do is at least get in there and close those gaps. But I'm going to go ahead and get in there and do the whole thing. So why have I been telling you for many years on this channel, like, I do not like to color first. I, I've, been, I've been saying it over and over and over. Okay. Well, and it's the same reason I don't like to color before I die cut. Okay. Now, one, I didn't just do that on purpose as a teaching tool, but this was one of the reasons I was going to cover. When you color outside the lines, it also decides to cut around your mistakes. So you don't get as even of a cut when you color first. And you, when I say even cut, I mean an even amount of white space around your whole stamped image. If you start bloop, making little extra colorings areas, then of course it's going to then cut around your mistakes. Okay, so that's one reason. Number two, another reason that you don't want to usually color before you stamp your images is because say you just want to do like, you just want to have a whole page of stamped images. You just want to, you want to stamp. I mean, the whole, the whole reason we use the scan and cut is efficiency, right? So there's, there's, it's going to save you like tons and tons of time, but not when you, not when you color them all. And then all of a sudden you, you cut out a page of stamped images. And then all of a sudden you, you, it say it's not, it's not aligned property. And I have lots of videos on how to align your machine. Then all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, I just spent like an, like a half an hour coloring all these stamped images. I was going to save all this time cutting them all out, but the machine wasn't aligned and you weren't, you know, maybe you were drinking coffee or doing whatever you're doing and you didn't notice. And all of a sudden all your images got cut out the wrong way. So like, that's another reason that you don't want to color before you cut out, but you're like, but but Paper Chef, you're sitting there coloring before you cut out right now. Yes, that's because I already know what colors I'm going to use. I'm going to bring it to the third method. I really don't have any other reason to change this color ever. And I'm going to tell you why. But the th so, and I also want to close, I'm going to, coloring helps me close the gaps without having to use my pencil trick. So that's why I'm coloring right now. I'm saving my time. I'm using the thin side of my, I'm using, still using the dark side, but the thin side. So the third reason is you can then decide how to color things later. See, I just colored outside the lines again. When you, when you decide to color later, you can decide what colors to use later, which is really nice. So like you might want to change your color scheme. This is important, especially like when you're doing Christmas things where you have, you could maybe use some of the things you might color with a blue and is that one that, oop, that's still the dark. I wanted to do the light. Blue and the silver theme. And then another one you might want to do with like a real red and old olive theme. And so you're going to be coloring a bunch of them different ways, depending on the project. So of course, it's better to color them later because you might be cutting out 20 of the same image, but then you can decide how to color them later. Okay. But I mean, I would say the real reason, if I ever had to say why I usually don't color before I cut, is because if it messes up your cutting, it, and it doesn't cut evenly, and you don't catch it on time, then all of a sudden you have like a big hot mess and you just got wasted all that time coloring. So really it's a time saver for me. 
All right, so we're good. We've done our talking. We'll do this one in a little bit. This is a little bit different of a reason or different method. All right, if you're ever not sure when your mats aren't loading, when we're using the Scan and Cut SDX 125, which we're using right now, there's a diamond at the bottom of your Scan and Cut mat. If you ever have an arrow at both ends of your mat, then you that means that you are using probably a mat from the CM models or CM350 because the SDX models have that diamond open hole. And this, of course, they're longer mats as well. I'm purposely not coloring some of these because we're just going to be cutting out these. But we can actually use, what, what we could do is we can use the pencil for one of these just to close the gaps in. So we'll use the pencil trick because we're all about tips and tricks on this channel. And if it doesn't work, um, I'll go back and, you know, finish. I'll either fix it or just show you how it doesn't work. And then some of these aren't going to get recognized, but that's going to be part of my teaching. The ones that should get recognized based on my experience of doing this, exact two, uh, cutting these exact things out earlier, my experience is then that these are going to work, that these three are going to work nicely, my little lotus flowers. So by the way, I'm using basic white Stampin' Up! cardstock because it has good ink absorption. I'm not covering up the registration marks because I'm using the scanner right now. I am using painter's tape, low tack tape. It's just helping me hold this because my mat is not very sticky. It's helping me hold everything together. I'm going to go ahead and load the mat and I'll talk about the lighting in a moment, how I'm going to turn out my side light because we're all about tips and tricks. So let me get this and I'll say hi while it's cutting and while it's scanning. All right, so let me just do this. Okay, so, so far, all right. I'm going to go, I'm going to show you, this is how I loaded this. Let's go back to the beginning. How I loaded this mat was using this button. All right, so let's now turn off my light so you can see better. And also I'm going to turn out my light. I wouldn't normally do it at this point, but it's going to help you see the screen better. Now, it, at any time before you're about to hit the scan button, then you want to turn out your light anyway, because you don't want this, the side lights shining into your scanning cut. I'm looking for the little stylus guy that I just had in my hand before this video started. I hear something shaking, shaking inside my machine. Still don't see what I did with the stylus. Here we go. All right, so when you turn on your machine, you see pattern and scan. We're going to be clicking the scan button. Now you're going to see, do we want to save the data? No, we don't want to save these flowers. We're going to directly cut out the flowers. This is a beginning tutorial, but some of you already know how to do this, but that's okay. You maybe learn some new coloring techniques. So we're going to use direct cut. That means we're directly cutting out the flowers with a little bit of an image around, a little bit of a white space around them. Now it's asking next, where do you want to store this information? We're going to store it in the machine. This is just temporary storage. Do you want to store it on your canvas workspace or on the machine? We're going to store it on the machine. Because I'm wired to see connected, I could temporarily store it up here. Up here meaning in the cloud. It's not really up literally, but it's just up in the cloud. Next, it's asking which scan area do you want to scan into? CM models don't have this. SDX models have this option. I'm going to go ahead and save time by saying that I only want to scan in the 12 by 6 area, the top half of the mat, because it saves us time. Might as well not scan in the entire mat area. Even though I've colored in my stamped images, I'm not selecting recognition mode color because that would take a lot of extra time. Black and white recognition mode is fine, and it's a faster recognition mode. So always keep it on black and white recognition mode. Next, you want to hit start, and it's going to scan in. At this point, if you didn't already, you would have turned off your... There's my cable in the way there. It, um, you would have turned off your side light. It's already done recognizing. I can turn this back on now. As you can see, there's a big difference. This is a side light, not to be confused with the overhead light on my ceiling. That one's okay. You just don't want light shining in the side of your machine when you're trying to scan. At this point, I could turn my light back on because I'm already done scanning. All right, good. This is a perfect example. And I couldn't have planned this better if I had tried. This is exactly what I was trying to show you by coloring versus not coloring, pencil trick versus no pencil trick. I'm going to get to tell you a few little lessons all in one here at the same time. And I also want to talk about ignoring object size. All right, so first lesson I want to teach you about this screen is we're going to zoom on in and see what a hot mess we have when we didn't do the coloring of those images. We didn't color. It, we, remember, these were also off stamped. These were stamped in Melon Mambo. I stamped once here, and then I stamped off. So it was a lighter, it was a lighter image. 
It's not recognized easily because it was lighter. Plus, I didn't enclose it with a pencil. These three are the three I colored. And this one I didn't have to enclose in a pencil at all because I it was stamped in Melon Mambo Dark. This one, I didn't close it in the pencil all the way. And this one was stamped in the Dark Melon Mambo. So the one stamped in the Melon Mambo Light did not get recognized. Okay, so that's the first thing to notice about this. So by coloring them, we made it very easy for them to be recognized. Okay, so now let's do this. Let's, let's go back and we're going to, first of all, select the areas we want to cut out with the scan and cut. So we're going to go like this. We're going to zoom in with this little selection tool and that'll get rid of all this extra mess, all these lines, all the dirt on my mat that got selected. This is one way to get rid of things that you don't want to be scanned in. So the first way is make a selection around just the things you want to be scanned in. The next way of getting rid of things you don't want to be scanned in and cut, well, they're already scanned in, I shouldn't say it like that. Let me rephrase, because these have already been scanned in. The, uh, the way to get rid of things you don't want to cut is by making a selection. The second way to get rid of things you don't want to cut is by ignoring object size. We're going to ignore object size to get rid of all these little specks, but you don't want to ignore the very thing you're trying to cut out. So let's not go up more than, you know, like an inch or something because these, we don't want to ignore the very lotus flower. If we ignore objects that are too big, you know, not only do we get rid of all the specks, but then we ignore the very flowers we're trying to cut out. So here, see how that's an inch? Let's go anywhere, you know, ignoring up to an inch. So now we have two ways to get rid of things we don't want to cut out. We make a selection, we've used ignore object size, and then we're going to, the third way is, we're gonna put a little outline distance around these, by the way. That's the little white space. That's this little white space around the images. We're gonna click on this. Outline distance of 0 0.04. So now we have a nice little white space around our lotus flowers. And then the final way to get rid of things we don't want to cut, like these two, because they're a hot mess, we're gonna go edit, and we're gonna click trash. So trash is whatever we're selecting. This is how you toggle between things that are selected. Go back and forth. Like for example, that little guy was a stray, a stray line. These are all cutting lines. And this cutting line's a mess. We don't wanna cut out a cutting line like that. So we're gonna select it and trash it. The rest are good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and cut those. Now, we don't have to worry about, I'm gonna, oh, by the way, I'm gonna sit, let me, let me show you how I'm gonna cut them. I should just, don't wanna skip any steps. I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna select cut. And then I'm gonna select OK, or start, I should say. And you don't wanna, of course, move your machine while it's doing it. Just move it, now it's starting. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a little rub. I know you're like, what? you just put tape on it. Why are you giving it a rub? I just really don't want things to move. And now I could say hello and put this one, down, put my little stylus down. So it's, it's doing its cutting. So it doesn't matter if the light's on or off right now because I'm not scanning, okay? That's the important point to remember. I'm cutting. So when you're cutting, you could have the light on or off, it doesn't matter. And then hopefully we'll get a good amount of white space. See, the white space is coming out very evenly around the different ones. All right, so we have, hello, Phil from Florida. Oh, it's giving me an error, it's, the paper got thick. Okay, wow. Okay, right, let me say, let me just, I just said, let me say hello to a couple of you guys and then I'll get it. So hello, Phil from Florida, Nubia from Florida, and Kim from Virginia. Okay, I'll say hi to my Australian friend in a moment. All right, now what it's saying is it got it, it somehow got over my paper and thought it was thick, and you just got to go with it. You just got to pretend that you believe, okay, scan and cut, I believe you. You think the paper's thick. Don't argue with it. It's a machine. You can't argue with a machine. So you just go like this. Do what it says. It's telling you it stopped operating because the paper's thick, which it's not, obviously, but it ran into a piece of my tape or what have you. So I'm going to turn my machine to the side, and I'm going to you go over here, and I'm going to select lever two, okay? No big deal. It really doesn't matter. It just it moves the scanning plate out of the way, and I'm going to go on my merry way and keep on cutting. So it, it just got curled up. The paper got curled up a little bit on the edge there. You could see, so it thought the paper was thicker, and it's really not. And So you just go with it. I mean, turn your... Put your lever up and don't be like, my paper's not thick. I don't understand. My paper's not really thick, blah, blah, blah. You, I don't want to hear all the whining. It's a machine. You can't argue with the machine. No whining. Just put, click the lever up to two and nothing happens. It's still the same. Okay. So anyway, hello, Annette from Australia. Nice to see you. Hello, Lisa 
from Critters Ink and Designs. And Kathy from Backyard Stamper. Yvonne is here. Yeah, okay, so she's saying she remembers the first time Kathy, Kathy loves the pencil trick. She's saying it's a game changer. Yes, it really is. I also have other tips and tricks like acetate tricks and many ways to get things that aren't being recognized. All right, so cool. Rose caught me live. Yeah, I'm, Rose, I'm not usually on this early, but I told my husband, I'm like, I'm early. I did my, I had a creative, what do we kind of call it today? Creative binge, a creative binge, okay? I'm just taking off the, where I took out my paper pumpkin kit from last month and I just started playing with it. And I just, I just like went crazy making all the cards. So anyway, I had a, a creative session, okay? Crafty binge, that's what I call it, a crafty binge. Anyhow, let's get the paper. I'm going to reuse this tape again. That was the culprit of making the paper think it was thick. It got, because my, my mat's not very sticky. Oh, anyway, by the way, you can put your lever down now back to one. Hopefully it won't think that next time. All right, so we have our images. And now tr say to try to do this with scissors, not to mention my thumb's been hurting. I mean, you know, try to do this with scissors. It will take you forever, and you won't do it as well as the machine. So let the machine do what it does best. And look at this beautiful thing. Let me get a piece of black cardstock because this is going to show you the really nice contrast. I mean, look at these beautiful lotus flowers. You no longer see the little dots of the distinctive stamping. This one's even pretty, and I can color it later. It cut out without any pencil trick. That other one was the one I used the pencil trick on that didn't work um, because it was too light. But that one is, I didn't need any pencil trick. Look at that, no pencil trick because I cut it, I colored it in Melamambo, and there's the other one I cut out. Look at that nice white space around them. So the ones that didn't cut out were the ones that I off-stamped, so that means I made them lighter. They didn't, they had too many gaps. The reason there was such a mess is because you gotta enclose the gaps. I'll still use these later and probably color them and probably cut them out later because, I mean, it's still paper. Maybe not this one, but this one is good potential. And, I, you know, I don't waste the basic white paper. All right, so that is that. Now, you'll see how I use these in designs in just a little bit. So let's now take this mat out of the way again and just kind of close this up for a moment and get this back here and do some more cutting, I mean, coloring tips and tricks and all that. Well, we're now going to do this this one. This just takes a little bit longer to color, so we won't do as many of them. Maybe we'll just do two. But the same concept applies. And you'll get to look at those pretty ones. The same concept applies when you're like stamping these memento black and, and coloring in. This one especially has a gap. You're going to see the stamp and how the, the kind of gap it has. So I'm going to reuse this stamping block, evict this little guy, and put this forget-me-not on there. Now, only, only Paper Pumpkin subscribers can get refills. So you're going to see, I don't even know if they even have refills for this kit, but you're going to see like if they do or if they did, I mean, why you'd want them because this, you can, you can stretch your kits out so much. It comes with eight cards, but you can make like, you get another refill, you can make another eight cards, but I'm even making probably a dozen cards instead of the eight just because of the way I stretch out the kits. All right, so this is important now to see this gap in this image. So when I'm going to, I'm going to just cut, uh, put a couple on to my paper. What we'll just do is one over here, and then I'll just do, since it's gonna take me a while to color, I'm gonna just do, whoa. Maybe I should do another one for a good measure. All right, we're gonna put one over here. Okay, so we're gonna do nothing to this one. It's our control. Like in a scientific experiment, we have a control, right? You do nothing to it. Look at the gap on the bottom. There's gaps along the thing. And it doesn't, it just sometimes makes a mess. But okay, we're going to color the one on the left, and then we're gonna cut it out. So I just used the colors that it said. Again, I don't have to think hard. I thought, oh, wow, these forget-me-nots are really pretty. I wonder what they used. Well, they used Tahitian Tide. That's what they used. And then it told me that Pretty Peacock and Garden Green were some colors that were in this design. So I just said, okay, well, that, that makes sense. So I took the thin side of the Garden Green, and even though it's my least favorite green, it works perfect for this one. I like happier greens, like happier greens. Like I'm more into like the old olive kind of green and the, I mean, I really loved the happiest green ever that we've had. I think is called Call Me Clover. 
I don't know what to say, happy green. It was like the best green, not the happiest green, but the um, the most like regular green. Like if kids are learning colors, that would be the green that would be like representative of green. It was called Call Me Clover. It was the perfect green. But of course, I do love Lemon Lime Twist. It's a current color. It's a fun, light green party color. I like Granny Apple Green. It's a happy green. Old Olive. But I th I think like colors like Garden Green and Evening Evergreen are just kind of like sad greens. They're very, very dark and sad. But they still work great for stems. I mean, and then I'm using the thin side of the marker because we, you know, Okay, and so by, by doing the bottom like this, it closes in that gap. All right. So what's your favorite green? And I can tell you all the names of the greens I can think of, you know. We have, we, I mean, and it could be like just jade. That's a nice green. It doesn't have to be a current green. What's your favorite shade of green? And it could be retired. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the marker side like this thick and I'm going to put this like there. I'm going to do the marker side and go like that and just put a little line with the marker on the leaves. I'm getting lots of votes for that granny apple green. Now what I'm going to do is take the light pretty peacock and you're probably not used to people doing this but I do whatever I want to do and I don't really follow any rules. And I just do things and see if they work. And it seemed to work. I'm blending this, the water-based marker with the alcohol blend marker. And it seemed to work. I don't know. I experimented and it came out. And I'm happy about it. And, you know, it's your card. So do whatever you want. But I'm just using a marker. And now I'm putting alcohol marker over the top. Because I didn't want so much green in the leaves. So I wanted a little bit of pretty peacock. Pretty peacock is, I guess, a green. But it could also be a blue. But, I mean, you could probably categorize it as a green. Shaded spruce is a pretty nice green. Now, when you when you use one of these, I'm going to find the color lifter. Sometimes what happens is you color outside the lines. We already talked about that's the reason I don't color first. But if you do color outside the lines, you can use what's called a color lifter. That's an alcohol marker that lifts all the colors out. All right, now let's take Tahitian Tide. And again, it told me that Tahitian Tide was the color that was used in the kit. So I was like, hmm, that, does, that seems kind of bright. And then when I colored in the Color Me, not, color me Nots, huh, isn't that funny? Forget Me Nots, then they really came out cute. So I'm going to do a couple flowers at a time. Not all of them because alcohol markers tend to dry really, you know, quickly. And if you want to blend two colors... You don't want to color all these at once because then the, by the time you get to the last flower, the first flower will have dried up. So that's the dark Tahitian Tide. This is last year's in color, but still current. It, our in colors are around two years. Let's put a little crushed curry in the middle because crushed curry was what it showed. I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the middle of these as one of the coordinating colors. All right, and then we're gonna take the light Tahitian Tide. And you can even little, leave a little section of white if you want, but I, light worked for me. I hope I'm on the light one. Sometimes I yap and pick up the wrong marker. I still don't have all the blends. I thought I did, but I'm still kind of collecting a couple more that I was missing. I did replace my real red the other day, but then I forgot to get the berry burst. But I'm almost done with my collection of blends. I love having blends because, and I like having blends and markers because the tips are different, the, the ways the colors react are different, and it just gives me so many options. And the one thing that makes me happy when I walk into my she shed is seeing all the colors, like, on my wall. That's, like, the one thing that makes me happiest. The paper, the ink, I know, it may be weird. What makes you happy when you walk into your craft room? Oops, I should have put that cap on tighter. So now I'm doing the light one, going over this, and then we're almost done and we're ready to cut this image out. I also going to add a little Wink of Stella. I feel like that one didn't have dark around the edges. Let's see. 
This one I might have been yapping. So let's see if I... Yeah, see, I don't think that one was dark around the edges. Or sometimes the brush side is drier compared to the... Compared to the other side. So sometimes you get a different reaction just out of... The light, you know, one side versus the other. All right, we're good. You get the idea. Get the mat out. Put the forget me not over there. Oh, I forgot where I put it. Just kidding. All right. Put this there. Oh, so Rose likes a clean desktop when she walks in. I have not experienced that in a very long time. <laughs> but I mean, I do experience it on my main table because I'm always that's this is where I'm always doing my videos and tutorials. So I always do clean off my main table. But my side tables, oh my goodness, especially during a BOGO sale, like that was just, I think I'm still having like PS, PTSD recovering from the BOGO sale and how much surface that took up. All right, let's see. A little bit more tape over here. Tape, tape, tape. I'm still deciding whether I'm ever going to do that again. All right, all right. So let's go back to this. I'll tilt. I'm going to tilt the camera a little bit this time, so instead of trying to move the machine as much. Oh, there goes my mat. See what happens. All right, going back to the beginning. Turn off that light there. Let's. Good, another reason. Good thing I taped it. All right. So now I'm scan. I'm loading the mat. Oh, she's happiest when her Christmas cards are done. I'm, I'm still in Halloween mode, girl. I mean, I'm still in summer mode, actually. This is my August kit. Then I have Halloween bags to make. And, and then I have... <laughs> so, yeah, I'm doing Christmas, too. I'm getting ready for Christmas craft fairs. In fact, one of the projects I'm working on right now, and I'm doing this with both... This is some retired paper. I use this all scan and cut, by the way. My scan and cuts... Like, my scan and cuts work 24-7 in my, in my craft room. One of the things I'm working on with Christmas is um, these Hershey Nugget treats. And I'll be, I'll be presenting that soon because I want to show you. I want to show you how you calculate how much things cost for a craft fair. And I made a new craft fair calculator and I'm making things for craft fairs. But mostly I'm doing Halloween. Anyway, so let me not digress. All right, so I, I can't see all your comments. That's why I'm randomly answering you like kind of like squirrel. I'm randomly answering you because I only see comments pop up once in a while. All right, we're gonna say, we're gonna, we, we turn on the machine, we see pattern and scan, we, we click scan, we click direct cut, we select direct cut, we save it to our machine, this part is a review, and we still want the top, black and white recognition mode, 12 by six area, and we're gonna click start. So we're doing the same thing as we did, that's a review. Direct cut, right, direct cut, 12 by six area, unless you have a whole bunch of stamped images, right? Black and white recognition mode, and then we click OK. So now we're going to ignore object size of, of an inch or so. And that one has a big line down the middle of it. So hopefully we can fix it with a little method of putting the little outline distance around the side. Let's try it. OK, so I'm ignoring some object size. And when I put the outline distance around it, I hope it fixes this one. And if not, I have to move it to another place or teach you a couple more tricks. So we're going to put an outline distance and it fixed it. Okay. So what was happening there? I'm just double checking. What was happening is it was going in there and it must have found a little gap and it got into the inside. But once you put this outline distance around it, usually you can fix the problems. This one, however, cannot be fixed because there was, there's a little gap down the middle there and that one leaf in the middle got cut off. Well, it's not that it can't be fixed, but that one I'm not going to cut out. So we're going to click OK. We only want to cut out the one we're going to not cut that one out because it's messed up. And we're, we're going to get rid of that stray bit. And we're only going to cut out the forget-me-not on the left. So a review is that we got rid of things we didn't want by selecting the area. Right? We, we got rid of things we didn't want by ignoring, or ignoring object size. And lastly, we edited and we trashed the things we don't want. So that's now. Now we're ready to cut out what we do want. We've turned out our side light. We've gone, we've gone to cut. And now we're, we've put the outline distance of 0 0.04. That's your setting. And then we're just going to cut out the forget-me-not. I give it a little rub. And then the other thing to remember is, say you have, 
a CM model of machine, not, not the STX model. You have a CM model. Then what you want to do, let me put that there so I don't, so I don't uh, accidentally get the stylus under there. If you have a CM model, you want to set your blade depth on a blade depth of four. That is going to cut out this basic white cardstock, the regular basic white, the thin one, not the thick one. And you know it's a thin one by the fact that your colors bleed through. Okay, so it's done cutting. And now we have our forget-me-not. And this one, if we wanted to cut it out without coloring it, then you go back to my pencil trick and you're going to... And this goes for... By the way, you might be sitting there saying, I'm watching this to learn about scan and cut, but I don't have a paper pumpkin kit. But you have stamped images, right? Everybody does. Every crafter has a stamped image. So it doesn't matter what you're using the stamped image on, right? So if you, if you are going to try to color... Like, without coloring this right now... You want to at least get in there and fill in all these gaps. So take a pencil and fill in all these gaps and you won't have a hot mess and it'll just scan in perfectly. And then you can color it later, but you do have to erase these because it needs to have a, a clear, well-defined black line. It has to have a big black edge to be able to scan around the outside of. So that's why you want these all, even this little leaf here, all these gaps to be enclosed. All right, so that's that. And then we get it. We we lift it out of the off the mat. The other t you know tip and trick is lifting it off by you know bending the mat a little bit or or just um, you know using your little spatula. All right. So now let's put this over here. You got to see a couple different types of. Let me again turn back on my light. You get to see a couple of different types of stamped images. Ones that was no no black lines but you still had nice melon mambo sharp edges, so it still cut out your stamped image. Then you have ones with well-defined black lines, very easy black lines, but we colored first, in, and by coloring we enclosed every gap, and that's why it cut out this image perfectly. And if you wanted to cut this one out, you don't need to color it first, but you do need to use a pencil trick if you're not gonna color it first, so that you don't have any gaps. But if you do use the pencil, then don't erase with this eraser, always erase with a white eraser or an electronic eraser. I have my electronic eraser, which is pretty darn awesome. And it vibrates and everything else. All right, so that's that. Now, projects. Okay, oh, let me finish saying hi, and then I'll show you my projects. So paper pumpkin kit. If you want to subscribe, you'll be getting the October kit. It'll sh give you a little sneak peek of the October kit when you go to subscribe. Um, if you're not in the U.S., you can't subscribe to me, but... There, we only have it in U.S. and Canada, so I know you're watching from around the world. And sorry that they don't have paper pumpkin in other countries. Just U.S. and Canada. But I can only sell them in the U.S. because that's what I'm licensed to do. All right. Yes. Um, okay, so the reason you're at... Tassie's asking about... And Linda's asking about the light. All right, I could show you my light. Let me... It might be helpful to show you my light. Okay, I'm going to have to turn it off for a second. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it down low enough to show you. It is, it is a gigantic ring light. So it's a video light. It's a video light. So you're probably wondering what kind of light does she have that would be on the side. See this? It's a gigantic ring light. All right, that's what it is. You can't see it all because it's so gigantic. And, and that thing would totally mess up the scan and cut. I've tried it with the lights on and with the lights off, and you have to keep that side light off because what it's doing is it's a video light. It's shining straight in and hitting the scanner, and it makes it makes all my outlines come out so they're not even around, the white space isn't even around the outside. So but thank you guys for chatting about that. And um, thank you, Lala's Crafts, Phyllis, Sherry. All right. Now you got to ask about the light. Okay. Christmas card, clean desk. Rose likes a clean desk. Linda likes Christmas cards. Oh, soft succulent. Forgot about that one, Karen. She likes soft succulent best. Okay, that's a nice light green color. And it's definitely a happier green than the garden green. Okay, but Yvonne loves garden green for Christmas. And Rose loves old olive too. Oh, gumball green. You're old school, Kim Condes. Pear pizzazz. Forgot about that one, Kathy. Call Me Clover was the best green ever. Yes. Hello, Janet likes old olive. Nubia likes... Apple, Grain Apple Green. Tassie likes Grain Apple Green. Cool. Linda likes Old Olive. Well, yes, um, Rose, if you want to get a new scan and cut, please use the link within 24 hours that it's on my channel. That helps me, helps support my channel. There's links in my description. So if you ever use one of my Amazon affiliate links, then please use it and get whatever you're getting within 24 hours. 
Or like, in other words, right before you're about to get it, please use one of my links. Right before you're about to upgrade to the Scanica SDX 125. Because I've literally had hundreds of people tell me they got a machine because of me. And I'm like, did you use my link? Oh, no, I didn't use your link. I just watched your video and then I researched it. And it's like, oh, my goodness, I talk about my links. I don't, you know, maybe not enough. Okay. Okay, light. We're talking about the lights. Okay, got you. Karen's here. Tessie from Arizona. Marilyn's here. Janet from Florida. All right. We are done at this point with all the tutorial portion. This is what a paper pumpkin kit looks like. I'll do a separate video on my channel showing some alternative projects. So right now, I just want to show you the ones that I made that have to do with cutting out stamped images. Now, of course, I do other techniques as well. So this isn't just... I'm just... Cutting out stamped images is only part of what I do when I create when I open up a kit. So for this one, I use the Stylish Shapes Dies. Can you get stitching with the Scan and Cut? Yes, but there's dies, metal dies, that do stitching a lot better than the Scan and Cut. Can you emboss with the Scan and Cut? Yes, but the embossing folders do a thousand times better job than embossing with the Scan and Cut. So while the Scan and Cut can stitch and emboss... It's not a good tool for that. It's better for cutting. I mean, even Cricut does better scoring job than, than, um, than the Brother Scan and Cut. I'm, I'm just being straight with you. This used the right tool for the job. I'm using Pretty Peacock for the background. I'm using this one, Tahitian Tide, a piece, an element from the paper pumpkin kit, Faith Over Fear. Okay, let me think of what that one was from. Because I, I, I took stamps from other sets, like for these projects. Faith Over Fear. I don't even know if this is still current. Okay, research assistance, is this still current? Maybe Kathy, she always helps me remember things. It's called Charming Sentiments. There's so many awesome sentiments in this. And I used Faith Over Fear because I just thought that was beautiful with this. Maybe you're giving this to someone from, you know, that's had something tragic happen to them, right? Faith Over Fear. Now, what I did, by the way, is I took a piece of the paper pumpkin element. I, I glued it first to the piece of Tahitian Tide and then embossed the whole thing. Using the Stampin' Up's Basics 3D embossing folder. Basics meaning there's three different types of folders in that collection. All right, next. Oh, by the way, these envelopes. Are these the bee's knees or what? Look at this. Oh, my goodness. How cool are these? You could make awesome card backgrounds just with the envelopes. Okay, thank you, Kim. Also, it's current right now. All right, thank you. This, so this is a current stamp set. And I use it whether it's current or not because I thought that was a good sentiment. But I always like things to be current. This Your Friendship is Unforgettable is one of the stamps that came in this kit. And I really love this. Forget Me Not Flower. This is a part that's, this devotion is on the back of the cards that come in the kit. But I wanted to put it on the front of the card. Just like, have you ever seen a card that has a definition? It has like a word and then a definition. Well, I wanted to put the Forget Me Not Flower on the front of this card. And there's Pretty Peacock again. And you have the definition of, you know, and what the Forget Me Not saying is. Okay, the next Forget Me Not card, I use this new embossing folder from the fall. Let me find container. All right. I can't find the I can't find the name of it right now. It's something about tile, but it's it's with this whole autumn leaves sweet or all about autumn sweet in our Stampin' Up catalog. What did you do to the inside of the envelope? Nothing. Isn't that gorgeous, Linda? This is it. I mean, that is the envelope. They, they, that's the paper pumpkin kit. It's fantastic. Our kits are fantastic. Okay, so then this was a little element from the kit. That's the one I cut and colored. And then I put some linen thread behind it. I, I added in a busting photo to the background. And believe it or not, these colors go together. I'm surprised myself. I was like, Crushed Curry and Tahitian Tide? What? So Tahitian Tide and Crushed Curry, they go well together. They don't look like they would, but they do. All right, so those are my three forget-me-not cards. And now I have the three lotus flower cards. I did the same thing again with one of the stamped images. I used the lotus flower, Strength, Resilience, William, Wisdom. And then I put that stamped image up, up there. You Rise Above the Rest is one of the sentiments from the kit, stamped in Pretty Peacock. The back is Pretty Peacock. I did the outer part in Bubble Bath and used that statement. The next lotus flower one, I went back to that. Oh, yes, Distressed Tile. That's it. Distressed Tile 3D embossing folder. I took a piece of the Orchid Oasis card that was in the kit, and it had a white inner core. So if you, this is a tip for embossing for you. This is part of my kit. Okay, this has... That's a little piece here. See, I'm, I'm working on these for some more. I'm doing some more things in this kit. Okay, 
Let's see. So you, soon you'll see a paper pumpkin video from me when I get done all these. I don't know where the cards are. Here are the cards. This, this kind of card. They gave us these cards. Well, not that. They gave us these. Here, here's one. Oh, no, that's not. That's. Yeah, this is one of the cards. I took it, and it has a white inner core, and it usually has a lotus flower thing on the back, right? This Orchid Oasis card that comes in the kit. And I thought it would be neat to emboss it because there's a white inner core, so then the white parts come out. And to get that effect, you'd have to, like, sand down the card and sand down our cardstock. So I really like how, how you can do it with just the cards that come in this kit. So it's another bonus of getting the kit. So on one, time, it, you know, on one hand, you might think, well, the cards in the kits are flimsy. But on the other hand, they make great for embossing. All right, let me show you the lotus flower envelopes. Look at that with the little, little lily pads on this. Beautiful envelopes. And then this was the, I did this sympathy card. Oh, I was going to use handmade hugs. This is this month's uh, card club. We'll be doing the card club videos next week. I have a card on blue card club. So go to my offerings if you're interested in my card club. We don't want to muddy the waters. It was this one. Heartfelt sympathy from the seaside bay. I thought this would make a great sympathy card. So, and then on the back... It has strength, resilience, it has the little saying. So either, either one you can use forget-me-not for... Also, forget-me-not would make a great sympathy card. So here's what I've done, is these are extra pieces. I'm mean, extra cards I'm in the middle of making in this box, plus extra pieces. I've already done all my stamping for the whole kit. See, so this is the element that comes in the kit. I just didn't like the sample where they had, you're going to stamp onto the lily pad, because I thought that was like... Pretty peacock stamped on a pretty peacock was kind of hard to read. So I stamped, I, I chose to stamp onto different die cut shapes that are white for contrast. These little embellishments came from the kit. And I'm starting, I found even some more things here, like just this one, just for you, was from this one as well. Charming sentiments. So I'm going to do a little project, like this is going to be for a little box that I'm making out of one of the cards. And I'm going to do a couple things with the envelopes. So I'll probably have about 12 projects. You got to see six of them. And I'll probably have 12 by the time I do my, my paper pumpkin video for the month of August um, later on this week. Because I can't wait to get my September kit either. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to cut out stamped images with your scan and cut. I hope you learned some new coloring techniques, some ways to put together the projects after you do all that work, and why you're doing all this work, right? Reasons to color before you use your scan and cut, and why that advantage of having that be recognized easier what you can do with all these beautiful stamped images, why we do this, how it saves us time and not having to use scissors, and just some of the really fun things you can do with the Brother Scan and Cut. All right, well, that's all for now. Have a great weekend, everybody. And hope to see some of you in the U.S. as my new newest Paper Pumpkin subscribers. That's all for now. This is the Paper Chef.